Okay, I'm gonna take this shot here and then I'll swing it over to you, okay? That's another sad day for, for the intervale. Just a year ago, my wife and I were here at the ICF trying to pick as, as much basil as we could because it was going to get flooded. Well, today, today's a replay. Uh, pick tons of green beans, basil, parsley. That's just a fraction of what's still left there and that will get lost in the, in the flood. So, what percentage of the crops down there are salvageable? Huh? What percentage of the crops are um, salvageable? A lot of them have gotten harvested. Um, a lot of the root crops. Um, I don't know what percentage, but um, we were just helping out at Intervale Community Farm and got all of the potatoes out of the ground. Most of the Some carrots. Some of them, yeah. All that were like ready to be Yeah, ready most to of the harvest. stuff just isn't ripe yet. Yeah. It's just too early. So do you started the day before the storm or? Um, I think that they might have, I think they started to do some yesterday, uh, yesterday harvesting yeah. of things to That's my get it out of the field. But it wasn't forecasted to be as bad as it's going to be. Yeah. Well, it was really poorly forecast. Yeah. Poorly forecasted. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to hold you up. You're no, carrying, no, no. You're carrying weight there. <laughs> yeah. Who you, you with? CCTV. Cool. Tommy TV. Thank you. I'm Mandy Fisher, 
the director of programs at the Intervale Center, and I'm here at the Intervale Center on July 11th, 2024. Um, we are awaiting the crest of the Winooski River um, pretty much one year exactly after the anniversary of the D July 23 flood. Um, the people behind me are farmers and farm workers and friends. Um, we had hundreds of people down in the Intervale this morning um, harvesting produce from the seven farms in the Intervale and also working at community gardens and with New Farms for New Americans to harvest as much produce as possible. Um, and um, we're expecting near full inundation today at the Intervale. We're probably about two hours away from Crest here. Um, and But at that being said, everybody's out of the Intervale um, here having lunch. Um, this lunch today was provided by UVM Sodexo um, and we'll be working in the next uh, week and weeks to make sure that our community is fed as we um, experience another devastating flood in the Intervale. Yes, I have been here for Irene, and I was also here last year, um, and I've been here for many other minor and moderate level floods in the last 18 years. Um, I feel like we were much better prepared this year. Um, after Irene, we did um, some flood planning, um, but then after last July flood, we did more in-depth planning with our farming community and with our neighbors, um, and we've been able to see that plan in action this year year, uh, much more organized uh, deployment of volunteers and um, just everything going a little little more smoothly. Um, and I think that's really important. We as a community can handle flood response, um, but what we really need is for our local, state, national, and international governments to think about uh, really investing in climate planning um, because we need climate resilience and we need it now. And we're on the front lines of this. Um, you can feel sorry for us and we're happy to have your sympathy, but we also need your rage because we're pretty angry and we need climate action now. Um, we are at climate breakdown and things are not going to get better if we don't all commit to um, really shifting how our culture works so that we value land, we value the people that grow food, and we take care of each other in really deep ways. So, is this, as of this moment, is the summer produce for these people come to a complete stop? Yes. So, as of right now, you know, we're cleared out of all the seven farms in the Intervale. Um, we'll have to wait and see the crest and where the water goes. Um, and then we have, we did pre-soil testing. We'll do post-flood soil testing. We'll follow the guidance from um, UVM and other regulators um, to make sure that we prioritize produce safety. Um, last year, we were able to have a pretty strong recovery in the fall because of the weather um, and how quickly we could get back out on field. Field. So um, these people behind me, they are experts in what they do, um, and they'll be able to get back into their farm fields uh, as soon as possible and safely grow food for our community. And hopefully the losses won't be that devastating, but we're, in, we're expecting they'll be pretty much total loss at this point. So you, are you going to be continuing to, to request farms here to help them here? Uh -huh. Yeah, we're going to need volunteer cleanup help. Um, the best ways to learn about that are going to be to sign up for our emailing li email list and to follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, we'll be posting calls for volunteers there. Um, and the other thing about post-flood is it's really important you have your PPE. So if you have gloves, you have masks, really important to bring those uh, to keep yourself safe. And we also will have things like that for volunteers um, as we enter flood cleanup stage in the next couple days. But right now what's important is you just stay out of the inner veil, um, give our community some space and let the water uh, recede. So if anyone were to, interested in helping out, they would go to what website? Or what mm -hmm. website? So you can learn more by going to intervale.org um, and or you can just like look us up on Instagram or Facebook um, and 
The other thing that you can do is you can support us financially. We've also opened the Farmer Reco Farmer Recovery Fund for Intervale farmers already. You can give a donation online. Um, and the other really important thing that you can do is advocate for smart climate policy and do it now. Call your local, state, and national representatives and demand that they take action to protect our communities and our food producers from climate breakdown. And we need it now. This is a parking lot that's usually empty at this time of day, this time of the year. And it's full of volunteers and farmers and staff. A lot of people down here.
So here we are at Ethan Allen Farm in South Burlington between St. Mike's and downtown Burlington. Let me get a little more light. And this land apparently is about 40 acres or more flooded. Looking towards the towards the Winooski River. All this is flooded cropland. So here we are at the Winooski River in South Burlington, and this is 19.9 feet above usual. And there's actually supposed to be a stairwell from that fireplace down to the river, 19 feet down to the river. So it's 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 at 19 and a half feet, and it's supposed to go up more. So here I'm found. That's not. Let's see. That's the Winooski River. That's the guy's backyard. And then this is where the Winooski River is now that's not supposed to be there. It's in a cornfield. That's in a cornfield. So that last footage was Country Club Road in South Burlington and Mountain View Boulevard. So now So just past the Air National Guard, now here in that muddy brook, and that is the Winooski. It's not supposed to be this close. Let's see if we can get this a little bit in. This is about 19 feet over flood. Over normal, I should say. So this is the end of the National Guard Road. I don't know what it's called. After so this is Muddy Brook. And this is why the road is closed. So I can't cannot get over to Essex. Because this is just all full of water.
So here we are at the mouth of the Winooski River. Things don't look too much out of control here. Seems to be a lot of debris. Mm-hmm. 